Hello everyone and welcome to my professional synthesis presentation for Library 204 Information Professions. Since I have over 62 slides I need to get through, I'll try and get through the background slides as quickly as possible. I want to start by talking a little bit about the background of our profession. I won't be going all the way back to the beginning, but instead, let's get in our DeLorean and get it up to 88 miles per hour so we can go back to 1989. Why 1989 you ask? In 1989, Marcia Bates published her theory on information seeking behavior called the design of browsing and berry picking techniques for the online search interface. I was introduced to this text during my first term of my MLIS studies and it's had a profound impact on me during my short time working on my masters. So who is Marcia Bates? Bates is a professor rank 6 at UCLA. This is a special rank higher than that of traditional professors and requires additional review beyond that of a full-time professor. She has taught and published in a variety of subject areas which include reference services, information seeking behavior, subject access, and user-centered design of information systems. No. You know what? This isn't how I want to present my final professional synthesis for this class. PowerPoint's great and all, but let's spice this up a little bit. Alright, that's a lot better. Now that we've freshened up the presentation, let me break down what the presentation is going to do for you. First, I want to talk briefly about what librarianship was. Next, I want to speak about what librarianship currently is. And, finally, I want to conclude with a brief discussion about where I think librarianship is going. So, who were we? In Library 200, we were introduced to the writings of Marcia Bates, who developed the berry picking theory in regards to the information seeking behavior of users. In many ways, the berry picking theory is more than just an information seeking behavior. It encompasses what I feel is the current trend of librarianship and how we must look at the profession if we want to remain competitive in the information landscape. Traditionally, the information profession was considered rigid and static, at least that was and still is a stereotype held by many users today. Prior to Bates's berry picking theory, this was a popular model of information retrieval. On one side, you have the document, or the information required by the user. From there, you have the document's metadata. This metadata makes the document findable. On the other side of the information cycle, you have the information need of the user. This could be any number of things from what kind of dog should they get, to what ingredients are found in Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Once the user had their information need, they perform a query. When paired with the other half of the information seeking cycle, the idea was that the user would be matched with the information they needed. In many ways, this linear approach to information is how libraries operated. I don't mean to say in the statement that libraries were simple, or that the profession was a simple one. The issue seemed to lie in technology. Bates argued that technological advancements made the information seeking pr process different altogether. So if that's who I thought we were, who are we now? I'm going to turn to Bates again because I think her berry picking theory is a very good example of where we are now. Instead, Bates would argue that the information seeking journey isn't linear, and it's actually very fluid. I think that this can be a metaphor for not only search behavior, but for the entire information profession. As the user conducts queries and receives documents based on those queries, they read and absorb the content, thinking critically about what they've read, and conduct follow-up queries based on the information retrieved. According to Bates, this practice resembles the act of picking berries from a bush, which often requires the user to gather berries from many bushes to fill a basket. This break from the linear is similar to the information profession today. No longer are librarians and information professionals simply the static gatekeepers of knowledge, bridging the gap between the user and the information. Instead, we are fluid, like Bates's model of information seeking, taking on many different roles within our organization. Like the six million dollar man, we had to rebuild ourselves, faster, stronger, and better to meet a new age of information seeking users. However, in most cases, six million dollars just isn't in the budget, so we'll have to get creative to make the most of the library's money. Some of those roles include advertisers, accountants, leaders, teammates, and technology experts. But in the end, we're still librarians. Advertisers might sound like an odd term to some people to describe librarians. However, it's the librarian's role to ensure that the library's products and services are known to the users. This is done through marketing. Although this seems like a simple task, doing it effectively is quite a complex undertaking. It isn't just our job to ensure that our products and services are known to our users, we also need to learn to effectively listen to our users' needs by creating two-way communication between the library and the community. This will strengthen the library's position within the community. Although librarians taking on the role of advertiser and marketer may never become an award-winning show on AMC, 
we must still effectively promote, market, and advertise ourselves to our users. Okay, maybe accountant is too strong of a word. Or is it? In Canada, the average academic library budget is just over $27 million. Of that, about $9.5 million, or 35%, is spent on materials. $15 million, or 56%, is spent on staffing, and $2.5 million, or 9%, is spent on the operating expenditures. Although this sounds like a lot of money for libraries to be spending, the fact is that libraries are facing huge budget budgetary constraints across the board. Pair that with a poorly performing Canadian dollar, and Canadian acad academic libraries are in rough shape. Since most vendor pricing is negotiated in US dollars, the Canadian dollar is stretched even thinner. One recent study explored a Canadian academic institution's budget and how much of it is dedicated to e-resources. That study shows that their e-resource budget has increased from 16.5% in 1997 and 1998 to 70% and climbing in 2012 and 2013. This requires librarians to get creative when managing their collection budgets often drawing on consortiums and external revenue sources to get the most out of their collection development funds. Collection development is only one aspect of the budget that librarians must balance. Add in staffing and operational expenditures, and librarians really do share account responsibilities. Leaders in libraries are extremely important. However, in academic institutions, the power that that leader has may be lower when compared to other agencies or organizations. Since the library is oftentimes part of a larger institution, the staff often fail to remember this constraint is on the leader of the library. A leader without followers, according to G. Edward Evans and Camilla A. Allier, lead nothing. In my final year of my library technician degree, we were required to complete a three-week work placement. On my first day, I sat down with the library manager, and he asked me, So why did you choose the technician degree instead of your MLIS? To be honest, I was stumped. I graduated two years before from university with a bachelor's degree, and I felt I needed a practical college degree to go along with it. I told him I felt like it was the best fit for me at the time to complete my LIT diploma. Over the next three weeks, I couldn't get the question out of my head. I thought about it constantly. On the last day of my placement, I felt I had a better answer to give him, so I wrote him a letter which answered his question the best I could. I wanted to get my technician degree so that when I decided I would be ready to pursue my MLIS, I would have the knowledge of day-to-day -day library activities to give me a better understanding of the functions of the departments in the library. Called servant leadership by Robert Greenleaf in 1977, this type of leader is said to be more likely to be trusted by staff, were thought to be better listeners, and became builders of library communities. As leaders, librarians have the potential to motivate their staff and become great innovators for their libraries. It's not enough to simply be teammates anymore. Technology and collaboration in libraries are forcing library staff to become virtual teammates. As libraries continue to look toward collaboration in the future, it'll be imperative that librarians learn to become strong virtual teammates. The ability to form virtual teams can be quite powerful. No longer are there strict geographic restrictions on professional expertise. Mike Necht argues that a shared sense of purpose can attract skilled or qualified staff members regardless of geographic location. By bringing together like-minded individuals, it creates a unified group to generate ideas for more complex issues. Communication is key in creating successful virtual teams, according to, according to Vicki Steiner. Something as simple as a lack of facial cues and body language can cause communication issues since they convey emotion like happiness, which are key in building trust within virtual teams. As we continue to work through our MLIS degrees, it will be important to develop our skills in virtual teamwork. No longer are libraries focused on just books, journals, and databases. Technology is becoming an important resource in libraries, and librarians will be wise to keep up with the emerging technology. As technology experts, it's our job to ensure that our libraries are outfitted in the technology that our users need to continue to be 21st century consumers of information. One resource that librarians would be smart to keep up to date on is the NMC Horizon Report Higher Education Edition like the more general NMC Horizon Report Library edition. This report attempts to identify technologies that will drive educational change for the next five years. In this year's report, some of the key technologies that academic librarians would be smart to watch are consumer technologies like 3D video, drones, mobile apps, and wearable technology, internet technologies such as cloud computing and real-time translation, social media technologies like collaborative environments, crowdfunding, and digital identity, and visual visualization technologies which include 3D printing, augmented reality, and visual data analysis. 
By exploring new technologies, lending libraries will ensure that librarians remain relevant and develop the skills needed to engage with new generation of users known as Generation Z. This new user base is the first generation of users born with technology as we know it today. So where are we going? As you can see, librarians have become the Swiss Army knife of professionals. Although I have given just a brief overview of some of the many hats that we wear, this is by no means a complete list. As we continue working through our MLIS degrees, it will be important to build an expansive portfolio to ensure that we don't get caught off guard by change. One thing's for sure, the profession is no longer linear, static, and unchanging. Bates's berry picking theory changed the way we viewed information and how users looked for it. I firmly believe that the fluid nature of Bates's information seeking theory can be applied to many other aspects of the library and information science field, and that it created a shift in the nature of the librarianship profession. If we don't change and address, adjust to meet the needs of our users, we run the risk of losing our place to simpler and more efficient tools that claim the roles in which libraries once excelled. I found a quote by Judy Luther who responds to this traditional way of thinking by stating, like it or not, Google and its competitor search engines have created a model that librarians, as information professionals, must meet head on. It's time for librarians to accept that library users are not interested in being more like us. If that means giving the keys to the user, we should be willing to work with them to make the library their space, not just ours. I hope this presentation showcased a few of the roles that librarians must play if they are to be effective in the new information landscape. Thank you.